Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, verses uh, 10 through 18. Jesus is. Jesus is so many things to us, but to the first century church, they depended on Jesus directly to empower the church and to make them victorious over all their obstacles. They didn't have the Bible yet. They depended upon the complete... Of course, they had the Old Testament Scriptures, but they didn't have the Bible. They depended on complete faith and trust that Jesus is who He said He was and that the message of the apostles was the true message of the Gospel. And they knew it by the power that they saw displayed in the miracles of the apostles, the miracles of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The greatest miracle of all. Jesus is. He is, first of all, the cornerstone. Jesus is the cornerstone. Acts 4.10 Be it known unto, all you, unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye, pre, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by Him doth this man stand here before you whole. You should all know, and all the people of Israel should know, that this man stands here before you completely well through the power of the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified and God raised from the dead, from the dead, from death. Listen, here's the story in chapter 3 of the man. Now, who is the man that stands before you, raised, uh, healed by the power of Jesus Christ who was raised from the dead? Who is this man? Well, he's in Acts chapter 3. Turn back a page, Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Here's the story of the lame man that got the disciples in trouble in chapter 4. Acts chapter 3, 1 through 10. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain lame man from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms? And Peter, fasting his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk and he took him by the right hand and lifted him up and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple walking and leaping and praising God and all the people saw him walking and praising God and they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple and they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him this is what got them in trouble. This man was raised to walk again from lameness by the power of the apostles through the faith and trust by the power of Jesus Christ through the faith and trust in him by the apostles and in this man. So they're in trouble now with the authorities. Acts 4.11 This is the stone which is set at naught of you builders which has become the head of the corner. Jesus is the one who the scripture says the stone which you builders despised turned out to be the most important of all. They despised Jesus Christ. They crucified Jesus Christ. Christ. These religious leaders that the disciples, the apostles are fussing with today in Acts chapter 4 are directly against Jesus. They actually led the revolt to crucify Jesus. Psalm 1, 18, 22. The stone which the builders refused has become the headstone of the corner. You refuse Jesus. A direct prophecy that Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone in Psalms 118. The head of the church who would be rejected by the false so-called builders of the kingdom of God. Thus the image of a cornerstone is used both as the chief stone and the stone at the corner of a foundation. In the first century AD the expression chief cornerstone was also used to refer to the stone placed on the summit of the Jerusalem, te Jerusalem temple. Thus Peter used the phrase to point out that when people reject Jesus Christ they rejected the one who completed the plan of God for all humankind. The phrase and its significance here would have been well understood in the first century, especially among the Jewish rabbis and the people who knew the scriptures. Jesus is the cornerstone. They knew very well what they were talking about. The apostles, the foundation... And the church is the building. The Jesus is the cornerstone, the apostles the foundation, and the church is the building of the kingdom of God.
Listen, Jesus is the cornerstone. Doesn't matter what uh, we think about it, doesn't matter what the world says about it, or our leaders today say about it, Jesus is the cornerstone of the church. He is the head of the church. He is everything to us. He is our life. He is the way God is going to save the world. Listen, we're talking about the temple. The temple. Did you know that Saudi Arabia has said last week that the Alaska Mosque and the Dome of the Rock is not that important to Islam anymore. That is historic. It's hysterical. And it's historical. Hysterical to uh, some of the Muslims who we thought would fight to the death for the Alaska Mosque. It's supposed to be the third holiest site next to Mecca and Medina in Saudi Arabia. The third most holy site is supposed to be the Dome of the Rock and the Alaska Mosque, both built on the Temple Mount where the God's Temple was. See how Satan is a master deceiver. He goes ahead once the God's people were sent into exile in AD 70. He moves in and, and Five or three, five something BC, and has the Muslims build the Dome of the Rock and the Alaska Mosque. Now, today in 2021, an unheard of thing. Saudi Arabia, the most Muslim of all Muslim nations, says that it's not that important to us anymore. Matter of fact, we would be in favor of the Jews building a temple there, the third temple. The way is being cleared, people, for the third temple to be built. The Antichrist Temple. I just threw that in there for extra. Uh, no charge for that. Jesus is the cornerstone. He's the cornerstone of the world. What God's Word says will come about. Jesus is not going to be pushed aside. His building is being built. The building of faith and trust and salvation through Him alone. Jesus is the cornerstone, the, the disciples said, the apostles said in the first century. Secondly, Jesus is the only way. Jesus is. He is the cornerstone. Jesus is the only way. Acts 4.12 Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. There is none other name. Salvation is to be, is to be found through Jesus Christ alone. In all the world there is none else whom God has given salvation through. Only Jesus can save us. There is salvation in and through no one else for there is no other name under heaven given among men by and in which we must be saved. Only by facing faith in the historical Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible, the one who came, died, and was raised again can a person be saved. Only through Jesus Christ. John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. No name, no power, no person, no ruler, no action can save us from our sins except faith and trust in Jesus Christ and Him alone. Amen. That's what rubs everybody today. They can't accept the fact that Jesus is the way, the only way. They don't want Jesus to be the only way. They don't like it because like the Sanhedrin, they don't want Jesus. Oprah Winfrey said one day years ago on her television show, Jesus can't be the only way. He just can't be. What she's saying is, I don't like it. I don't want Him to be the only way. Let us make a way. Surely not. Surely we don't have to come through Jesus Christ and repent of our sins and trust in Jesus Christ alone. That can't be right. Well, I'm sorry. It is. And it's a great way. It's the only way. It's the best way. Jesus Christ loves us. He died for us. Who else do you want to save you? Who else can? They don't want Jesus. They don't want their way. They don't want His way. They want their way. Not His way. Not God's way. James 1.14 But every man is tempted when he's drawn away of his own lust and enticed. People want to do what they want to do. They want to come to God, but they want to come to God their way. They want to come by works. They want to come by adding something to their lives. 
They want to come because basically mankind is good. That's the theme today of the, of the left, is that everybody's good if you just give them a chance. How's that working out for you? Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington? Washington, D.C.? We have troops costing $521 million a year. We station troops around Washington, D.C. to guard us from what? I think it's to keep Congress in, not to let people attack them. Maybe they'll uh, completely destroy the world if you, if you don't let them out. If Jesus were, the on, were not the only way, then we would have chaos and confusion. That's what the devil loves. He loves confusion. He loves that. 1 Corinthians 14, 30, Corinthians 14, 33, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, and as in all the churches of the saints. Psalm 71, 1, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Yeah. It is confusion to believe salvation is in any other than Jesus Christ. Isn't it interesting that the Chinese have a prophet named Confucius? <laughs> Very fitting. Because every religion of man is confusion. Well, okay, uh, I think I'll become a Jehovah's Witness. What, I have to, what do I have to do to be saved? Well, let's see. It's a long process. You've got to sell enough to be worthy, uh, give enough books away to be worthy of the kingdom of God. You've got to do enough righteousness. Okay, uh, how much righteousness do I have to do? Well, that'll be found out at the end. You'll find out whether you were worthy or you were good enough. Okay, well, how do I get to be a part of that 144,000? Well, that, it's too late for that. Those seats have already been taken. Okay, then I don't get to inherit the earth. No, no, you really don't. Well, then why would I want to be a Jehovah's Witness? Well, because it is, it's the, the way. Okay, let's start again. How do I get there? Well, you won't know till it's all over. Okay. Why would I want to be a Jehovah's Witness again? A circular. Just keep going and going because they have no answers. And that's like Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, all false religions in the world, New Age. Tell me how I can know for sure I'm going to heaven. That's what everybody wants to know. Well, it says it right here. There's another. Here it is, people, your answer. Neither is there salvation in any other. Nobody else on the planet can save you and guarantee you're going to heaven. Because everybody knows we have a spiritual side. Everybody knows in their heart of hearts that we're going to live again. If a man dies, shall he live again? That's one of the questions the Bible answers. That's why the Bible is written. So we can know that we can have life eternal through Jesus Christ and Him alone. Neither is there salvation in any other. There is none. He says it again for emphasis. There is none other name under heaven. We are given among men whereby we must be saved. Hey. Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons tell you to be a good Mormon and a good Jehovah's Witness and you'll be saved. Islam says be a good Muslim and you'll be saved. Be a good one. Kill as many Jews as you can. You'll be saved. But Christianity says look to Jesus Christ and Him alone. He's already done the work on the cross. The cross says done. Religion says do. Keep doing and we'll let you know when it's over. It's like taking a test when you're in school. You think you did all right. You wind up, you made 61 instead of 99 like you thought you did. And you're saying, well, I know I answered those questions right. And the teacher says, well, actually you made 99. I just didn't want you to feel too good about yourself. But it don't matter. you got to make 100 to pass. Well, why did you do that? I just want to make you feel better. That's what religion does. Makes you feel pretty good on the way to hell. Makes you feel pretty good about yourself. I get criticized for saying this. Mother Teresa launched people to hell on a clean bed and linen with water and food. She launched them into hell because she didn't tell them the truth about the gospel. She believed all religions are good and have a way to God. Confusion. 
confusion. I like the, that's why one of the things I love about the Bible is everything I love about the Bible, but the one thing, there is no confusion. Amen. There is no chaos. There is only the way, Jesus Christ. Wouldn't you want to know what God says? God, what do you, how do I get to you? How do I get to heaven? Well, the Bible says, I don't want to know from the Bible. Tell me how, God. I want to know mystically. I mean, there's got to be more than just this book. Thy word is truth. Right. Now, I don't want the Bible. I'd rather know with some... I want you to speak to me in another way. Well, Romans 1 says He's already spoken to us through creation. He's already spoken to us through the things that happen in our lives. He's already spoken to us by the miracle of our birth. And the, the rocks cry out, God exists. And there's a great deception going on in the world today to try to draw us away from God. You know, UFOs. Here we go. Where's my tinfoil hat? <laughs> they are increasing exponentially. And it's a trick. It's a deception. There's going to be, I believe, during the tribulation, a little green man's going to step out and say, we had all the answers, maybe before the tribulation. And people are so gullible, they're going to fall down and worship them. Maybe that's what that image of the Antichrist is. A, a little green man. I'm not saying he's a green man, but that's what we're looking for. E.T. come home. I'm telling you, signs in the sky. The Bible is full of them. I preached a message about that not too long ago, about all the signs in the sky that's coming. They're everywhere. Because Satan is the prince of the power of the air. He's going to use deception. Because Jesus is coming to get us in the clouds. And he's trying to already he's trying to destroy that by putting his peep, his uh, deception in the clouds. Everything God does, Satan tries to mimic and to destroy. <clears throat> Jesus is the cornerstone. Jesus is the only way. Only way. Thirdly, Jesus is power. Acts 4.13 And when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. And they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. The members of the council were impressed to see how bold Peter and John were and to learn that they were ordinary men of no education. They realized then that they had been companions of Jesus. So it must have been something about Jesus. Even though Peter and John were uneducated Galilean fishermen, they spoke with confidence and freedom. Their presentation of the gospel was powerful because they were personal witnesses of everything you've spoken about. When you know Jesus is your Savior and Lord, you can really tell others about Him. When you know Him, you are excited and you can tell the truth and people will believe it. Well, they know something's happened to you. They can't deny your testimony. That's why it's important when you're sharing Christ with others to give your testimony. I prefer to stick with the Scriptures and then I'll give testimony if need be. But uh, your testimony is very powerful because they can't say, oh, they have to say something's different. Something did happen. And that's what these guys are saying. The testimony of Peter and John was impressive. They were uneducated fishermen. They spoke with confidence and freedom. Acts 1.8 But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and in the uttermost parts of the earth. Matthew 28.18 And Jesus came and spake to them saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Jesus has the power to change lives. <coughs> Jesus has the power. They had been with Jesus do people know that you have been with Jesus? Can they tell that you've been with Jesus? Where did these guys get their boldness? They had been with Jesus. Where did they get their wisdom? They had been with Jesus. Where did they get their power and their strength and their might? They had been with Jesus. You want courage? You want power? You want wisdom for these last days? Be with Jesus every day. Start the day with Him. End the day with Him. The religious leaders called them unlearned and ignorant men. That's what they're calling us today. All of those of us who are with Jesus are going to be called stupid and ignorant in these last days. I can't say that it's coming because it's already here. It's already here. The Bible is well on its way to being banned as hate speech. 
in the United States. It's well on its way to being banned as offensive. Because it is offensive to sinners. The Bible said it would offend those that sin. It will offend us because it tells the truth about us. And people don't want the truth anymore. Nobody wants to say, well, you know, that's right about me. I, I, that's right. No, they want to defend themselves and, and lie out of it and they get offended if you tell them the truth about themselves. People don't like to admit they're wrong. They just don't like that. Hey, that offends me. You can't offend anybody. What can you say that doesn't offend people? You can't talk to people and tell them the truth. But we have to keep at it. They're going to persecute us as they persecuted Jesus. We're no different than Him. They persecuted me. He said they'll persecute you. It's coming, people. I prayed for many, many years that Jesus would bring persecution to the church in America because it would make us a stronger church. It would make us a greater church, a more powerful church. And that's not going to be easy. But we'll be all right because we'll have the power of Jesus Christ. He said He would give us the words to say. Don't even think about what to say. You'll be ready because I'll make you ready. If you've been with Jesus, you'll be ready. Jesus is the cornerstone. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is power. Fourthly, Jesus is undeniable. Acts 4.14 And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. There was nothing that they could say because they saw the man who had been healed standing there with Peter and John. And since they saw the man who had been cured standing there beside them, they could not contradict the fact or say anything in opposition. They could say nothing. The Sanhedrin knew that the miracle was real. The evidence was there. The healed man was standing right there. They knew the disciples were telling the truth and that the miracle was real. At least they didn't try to lie against the evidence standing right in front of them. At least give these guys credit. Today, people lie even when they have a mountain of evidence standing right in front of them. Like voter fraud, mountains of evidence. Uh, nothing to see here. Let's move on. The border is being overrun. Uh, nothing to see here. Everything's under control. COVID vaccine is experimental and is in a trial period. But it's safe. Take it anyway. Nothing to see here. Just take it. Why? Because they know that we people are so stupid. They know they can deny the obvious and the media will spin it for them and people will believe an obvious lie as the truth. Am I right? Am I right? We get the spin. Boy, the Sanhedrin, they needed MSNBC, they needed MSNBC News and CNN to help them out here, didn't they? Because they didn't know what to say. They didn't know what to say. Oh, today they would just say, now that's not really, he wasn't lame. Though they have some key words I was reading about today that, that they must say. Uh, we've checked, we've fact checked that and that really wasn't true. He wasn't really lame. Uh, we have uh, information that we've gathered tells us that this lame man was not really completely lame. You know, they have little words, they use, phrases. Uh, we have ascertained that this lame man really wasn't, you've got the wrong guy. Yes, there was a lame man, but you switched him. And you see, and you're thinking right now, well, that's plausible. See, you just use certain phrases. That's what the media does. They spin it. According to unnamed sources. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> According to unnamed sources, this lame man is the wrong guy. Or he wasn't really lame. This, use the right phrase. Uh, boy, they needed some, they needed media back then, didn't they? Verse four, uh, 15, four, chapter 4, verse 15. But when they had commanded them to go outside the council, they conferred among themselves. So they told him to leave the council room. They started discussing among themselves, having ordered the uh, prisoners, the apostles, to go outside of the chamber. They conferred, they debated among themselves. They held a secret meeting. When evil people want to do evil things, they confer with one another in secret to hatch their evil plans. 
Psalm 64, 2. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of workers of iniquity. We have many secret societies today. The Masonic Lodge, the Bilderbergers, the Club of Rome, Skull and Crossbones, the Illuminati, who, and more, who meet in secret. When someone tells you we'll meet and get back with you, you can be sure it's not going to be good, right? <laughs> When you're getting ready to buy a car and the salesman said, let me get back, I'll get, we're gonna, I'm going to talk with my boss and we'll get right back with you. You can be sure they're going to have, they're not going to bring back your price. When someone tells you, I'll get back with you, that's not going to work out good, is it? Circle back to them. Yeah, <laughs> I'll circle back to that. <laughs> the devil does things in darkness. He hates the light. So do his workers of iniquity work in darkness. Secrets. So they have a secret meeting. Verse 16, Acts chapter 4, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem. We can't deny it. What shall we do? Something's happened here we can't deny. It. Again, uh, you can tell that they weren't Democrats. Because they didn't try to deny the obvious. <laughs> so they had to do something that would save face and hopefully slow down this movement. One thing they could have done is to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. That would have done every, solved everything. They knew it was true. They knew Jesus healed the man. They knew the apostles were not lying. But they were, not in, they were more interested in power and prestige than the truth of God. Verse 17, But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth no, to no man in this name. But to keep this matter from spreading any further along, the people, let's warn these men never again to speak of anyone to anyone in the name of Jesus. But in order that it won't spread, let's just shut them up. So they came up with a perfect plan. If we can't deny the truth, let's censor the truth. Let's stop the truth from being told. Hmm. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> censor those who tell the truth. We would never do that today in our society, would we? No. So they decided to make it a crime to speak about Jesus. Would you call the Sanhedrin an evil organization? Of course you would, because they were. Would you call anyone who acts this way as evil? Of course, because they are. When you censor free speech, you have admitted that you don't trust the people to make up their own mind and that they might be telling the truth. That's it. Because you want them to believe a certain way so that you don't lose power and prestige. Now, all speech is not good speech, but all speech should be free. Let's be, let it be checked in the marketplace of ideas. If it's not truth, then it will be found out. Let everything be tried in the court of public opinion. That's the way this country used to operate. That makes a healthy society. But when you try to suppress ideas you, uh, that you don't like, you become like these wicked Sanhedrin, afraid of the truth. They can't handle the truth. This little story today is exactly what's going on in the world today. They needed Jesus. They needed to trust in Jesus. They needed to come to Jesus. Jesus is the cornerstone. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the power. Jesus is undeniable. Trust in Him. Because there's no other way. There's no other way. Acts 4.18 And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all or teach in the name of Jesus. So they called them back. No condition are you ever speak about Jesus. So they censored them. They discussed it and actually went through with it. Now you'd think, well that's not going to work. And it didn't. The disciples spoke in the name of Jesus. After that, in chapter 5, the disciples ignored the Sanhedrin. That's what I love about these apostles, disciples, now turned to the apostles after Jesus resurrected. Uh, so they discussed it and actually went through with this plan, the Sanhedrin. Many times people will talk about doing evil, but someone will always say, is this the right thing to do? Remember Gamaliel? In the next chapter, the apostles are called healing people, so they are arrested. They went right back to doing what they were supposed to do. Chapter 4, they're told, don't speak anymore or teach in the name of Jesus. Chapter 5, they go right back and teaching and preaching in the name of Jesus and healing. 
So they got arrested in chapter 5. Didn't we tell you not to speak anymore in the name of Jesus, they asked. The apostles answered that famous passage, Acts 5.29. We ought to obey God rather than men. They were about to be put to death when Gamaliel, the greatly respected high priest, steps in. Acts 5.38. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest happily be found even to fight against God. Gamaliel was a wise man, I think a godly man. Paul brags on him in Acts chapter 22. I am verily a man which am a Jew born in Tarsus, city of Sicilia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God as you are this day. Gamaliel was a great teacher of Jewish law. You know, Gamaliel must have passed away soon after this because eventually the apostles were all martyred, but John. So they didn't obey his command very long. They did this time. And the persecution continues even to this day of, of Christians by evil people. So they have not listened to Gamaliel, who was right. If it's a mouth, if it be of God, you can't stop it. If it's not of God, let it go. It'll fizzle out or not be powerful. Too bad we don't have a Gamaliel in the progressive socialist movement today. Too bad we don't have a man like that who would stand up to these people and say, now wait a minute. Let them say what they want to say. If it's not truth, it'll fizzle out. It'll go down in the dustbin of history. But if it is truth, then we must hear it. There is no Gamaliels today. No. We don't have anybody saying, now they need to be able to say what they say. This is the second, what is it? First Amendment. You can say what you want to say, but if it's not true, it'll fizzle out. We have to allow the ideas to be judged by people, whether they're true or not. That's what America was founded on. If we don't have the First Amendment, we have nothing. We're no longer America. We're just a tin pot dictatorship. But the problem is, Gamaliel wasn't afraid to lose prestige or power. He felt what they were doing was of God, the, the Jews. He felt the Jews were the way to God. He was confident that it would be okay to let Christianity go. And if it was of God, then he would probably have joined it. He may have become a Christian before he died. We don't know. He may have joined the movement. He was interested in truth. But we don't have anybody like Gamaliel anymore, even on either side. We don't have it on either side. Maybe a couple of men will stand up every now and then and say something. We don't have that type of person anymore. Just one person with wisdom that both sides would respect. Now we have people with wisdom that are speaking up, but neither side respects them. Because you know why? They're usually Christians. And we don't get any respect. Oh, they're going to use the Bible. An atheist challenged a Christian to a debate and said, I'll debate you, the atheist said, about creation, but you can't bring the Bible. <laughs> and the Christian said, okay, I agree, but you can't bring up evolution. Well, that's the foundation. <laughs> well, that's what the Bible is, the creation, the foundation. <laughs> You leave Charles Darwin and I'll leave the Bible. Well, I can't do that. I can't win that way. <laughs> Listen. What we need is a person with wisdom from both that both sides will respect. But there is no such person. But there's one coming. He's called the man of sin. He will bring a, a pseudo-peace to the world that will last a short time. Jesus is... Jesus is the cornerstone, the only way. Jesus is the power. Jesus is undeniable. But there's a man coming who will have all the answers and bring everybody together. The Gamaliel of the end times, the man of sin. He'll last, what is it the Bible says in Revelation? He'll be one hour with the kings. He'll, the seven kings will give obedience to him for one hour. That means a very short time, three and a half years, seven years. The last three and a half for sure. Listen. But we know 
that after that fiasco, Jesus will come and set them all straight. He is the truth. That's number five. Jesus is the truth. The way, the truth. And He will set these liars on their ear. Jesus is the cornerstone. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the power. Jesus is undeniable. Jesus is the truth. Let's pray.